We're going to finish up chapter uh, 6, uh, doing section 4, uh, talking about uh, the force due to drag. When there's a relative velocity uh, between a, f a fluid and a body, either because the body's moving through the fluid or because the fluid is moving past the body, um, the body is going to be experiencing a drag force that we're going to use the variable d for. And it's going to oppose the relative motion and points in the direction in which the fluid flows relative to the body. So for instance, if you had an object moving in that direction um, with some force, you're going to have the uh, drag force going in the opposite direction of motion. Uh, now if you were falling down through uh, the air, let's say like a skydiver, you know that you have the weight pulling you down. And going up, you have the drag force. So for cases in which uh, air is, is the fluid and the body is blunt like a baseball rather than a slender javelin, the relative motion is fast enough so that the air becomes turbulent, which means that it's going to break up in these swirls um, and uh, or swirls behind the body. And it's going to create something called drag where uh, it's given by this equation, it's one-half C rho, so this character is the Greek rho, um, times A V squared. So A is going to be the cross-sectional area, it's the effect of cross-sectional area. Um, so for instance, if I had something like a sphere, the cross-sectional area is just going to be a circle. Um, if I had a cube, the cross-sectional area, as long as it's orientated uh, at one of its sides, is going to be um, just, a, just a square. So, um, all right, so rho is going to be uh, the air density, right? the density of the air, which is mass per unit volume. So the units are kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, and then we talked about A, and then C is just going to be a drag coefficient, very similar to um, our coefficient of friction um, generally ranges between 0 and 2, but can sometimes be outside of that range. All right, um, so when a blunt body flaw, uh, falls from rest through the air, the drag force is going to be directed upwards, as, as I showed earlier. All right, so again, you have mg going down, the motion is down, and so this is where the acceleration is, so that the drag force is going to be up. Its magnitude is going to gradually increase from zero as the speed of the body increases. So again, if you look at our equation for drag, it has this velocity term in it, which is going to change. Everything else is constant. Um, so as the velocity increases, the drag force is going to increase, which actually is going to lower the amount of acceleration. Um, Okay, so for Newton's second law, along the y-axis, we see that, well, the drag minus gravity is going to be your acceleration. If you increase drag, you're going to uh, decrease the acceleration. Where, okay, so where m is the mass of the body. Now, eventually, the acceleration is equal to zero. You're going to have the drag force and the force of gravity cancel each other out. And when you get to that point, it's called terminal speed. So this is the fastest something can go, um, because of its geometry, which is given by our cross-sectional area, and because of the drag coefficient. Okay. So uh, in this equation here, we just take our um, F is equal to ma. We have our sum of our forces, so we have the drag force minus the force of gravity is equal to zero in this case, because the acceleration is zero. So if I wanted to find what the terminal speed was, all I'd have to do is rearrange this equation and solve for our vt. So our terminal velocity is just uh, the square root of 2 times the force of gravity, where again, fg is just mass times gravity, uh, which is 9.8, uh, divided by the drag coefficient times rho, which is the density of uh, the air or the density of the, of the uh, fluid, uh, times a, which is the cross-sectional area. All right, so just uh, some typical terminal speed values. Um, if you look, a skydiver is going to be going about 60 uh, meters a second at, as the fastest. Um, they attain this speed um, in roughly 430 meters. Um, we say this is 95% of the distance, so 95% of the distance that it takes for us to get to this terminal speed, um, that's because it's going to be asymptotic. You're going to never truly reach this terminal speed, um, but it'll 
it'll um, you mostly get there um, in in the distance that is shown here. If you look at a ping pong ball, it's going to be a lot slower, right? Much more drag, um, so you're going to have a lot lower distance. Uh, and then something like a raindrop um, has a terminal speed of seven meters a second, which is relatively slow, and it only takes six meters uh, to get to that terminal speed. We're going to do an example on this in a second. Okay, so a uh, sample problem. A raindrop with a radius of uh, 1.55 millimeters, so the radius is going to be 0 0.0015 meters, falls from a cloud that's height is 200 meter, or 1,200 meters above the ground. So the height is going to be 1,200 meters. The drag coefficient C for the raindrop is going to be 0.6, so they give you 0 0.6. 6, 0 for your drag coefficient. Now assume that the drop is spherical throughout its fall. The density of water is given at, oops, so rho is, oops, going to be 100 kilograms per meter cubed. And the density of air, which is rho A, oops, is equal to 1.2 kilogram per cubic meter. All right, so as uh, the previous table indicated, the raindrops reach terminal speed after falling uh, just a few meters. And what is this terminal speed? So if we look back, it's again, it takes a raindrop um, about six meters to get to terminal speed. So our x distance, or actually we should probably say y distance, or just d, is going to be six meters. All right. Raindrop reaches the terminal speed Vt when the gravitational force acting down on it is balanced with the air drag acting up, um, so its acceleration is zero. Now we apply, uh, so we could apply Newton's second law and then the drag force uh, to find the equation for Vt, but we already found that. So if we go back a couple slides, we saw that this equation was the velocity of terminal speed. All right, so we'll take that equation uh, and use it. All right, so let me write that down again over here for us. So terminal speed is equal to the square root of 2 times the force of gravity divided by C density of air times A. Okay. Um, so to use this equation, we need the drop's effective cross-sectional area, A, and the magnitude of the force of gravity. Now, because the drop is spherical, the area is just going to be a circle, which is pi r squared. And that has the same radius um, as the sphere. So to find the force of gravity, we use three facts. Well, first of all, force of gravity is mg, we know that, where m is the drop's mass. The spherical drop's volume is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. And the density of the water in the drop is the mass per volume, right? And so that's given by mass per volume. All right, so using those things, we, we can say that while well, the force due to gravity is just going to be the volume times the density times gravity. Oops. So you get 4 thirds pi r cubed times the density of water times gravity. And that's going to be our force of gravity. Now we next substitute this uh, into the expression for A, and then given data in, in using the equation that we have, um, being careful to distinguish between the air density and the water density we obtain. All right, so we're going to take this equation here, and we're going to, let's see, so our terminal velocity is going to be plugging everything in. So we're taking what we found for the force of gravity, we're taking um, what we found for the area and plugging all that in, and you get 8 pi r cubed times the density of water times gravity divided by 3 times our constant times the density of air pi r squared. Now a lot of this is going to cancel out, so you have these pi's that are going to cancel out, you have these r cubed is going to cancel out with this r squared here, and it'll just have r left on the top. Alright, so this is going to end up being equal to 8r times the density of water times gravity 
divided by 3 times our constant times the density of air. We can go ahead and plug in all of our values for this. So we get 8 times 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters times 1,000, which is our or so our density of water, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, times gravity, which is 9.8 meters a second squared. And this is all divided by 3 times our drag coefficient of 0.6 times our density of air, which is 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. Plugging this into a calculator, we get 7.4 meters a second, which is approximately 27 kilometers an hour, right, which isn't too fast uh, for a, a drop of water. It doesn't sound that bad. Um, but going on to the next equation, or the next question rather, what would be the drop's speed just before impact if there was no drag force? So if we didn't have this drag force, this atmosphere acting on it, how fast would these raindrops be going by the time they hit the ground? All right, so with no force uh, to reduce the drop speed during the fall, the drop would fall with a constant free fall acceleration g. So we can just use the constant acceleration equations, which is our kinematic equations from before. Now, because we know that the acceleration g, um, acceleration is g, the initial velocity is v naught, uh, or v naught is zero, because we're just, it's starting at zero, then it starts falling. And then the displacement, x minus x naught, is just minus h, right? Because it's starting high, coming down, so you can have a minus h displacement. All right, so we can use this equation, which is vs squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a times our change in x. We know that this is going to cancel out. We know that acceleration is g. We know that x minus x naught is just minus h. All right, so plugging all of that in and solving, we end up getting our final velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh. All right, plugging in the values we have, so it's 2 times 9.8 meters a second squared times our height, which is 1,200 meters. All right, that was given to us in the problem earlier. So our final velocity is then 153 meters a second, which is approximately 550 kilometers an hour, which is really fast. It's actually so fast, it's, it's just about as fast as a bullet. Um, so it's a good thing that we have drag and we have air resistance because if we didn't, uh, rainstorms would be pretty devastating. All right, that is it for this chapter. Uh, we'll see you next time.